What do you think this is? Now, from the badge, some people think a Bentley. Some people think an Aston Martin. But no, it's a Genesis. And no, Phil Collins isn't inside playing the drums. This is the Genesis GV60. It's an all-electric vehicle that is rivaling the Kia EV6 GT and the Tesla Model Y. And for good reason. This has got performance and build quality to embarrass them both. In this video, I'm going to go around the outside, the inside, go on the road to see what it's like on the move, and also we find out how good it is value for money. My name's Jack, this is Life in Motion, enjoy. Now, if you weren't aware, Genesis is Hyundai's luxury vehicle division. In my mind, it's like Maybach for Mercedes. And if you know anything about Hyundai, you'll know that the build quality of the cars recently have been outstanding. This particular car is the 77.4 kilowatt hour, dual motor, all wheel drive, Sport Plus GV60. That gives you 289 miles of range, 10% to 80% charge in 18 minutes, and 0 to 62 in four seconds. Are you getting bored nowadays of every electric vehicle looking basically the same? Every mid-sized EV just looks the same, lights, interior, exterior. I'm so glad the Genesis have actually thought, you know what, we're gonna make our car look a bit different. And the Genesis at the front looks very Genesis has got this diamond looking grille, which is rather nice. And you've also got, as part of the innovation pack, these quad lights, which are really funky. Now in the innovation pack, you also get remote smart parking assist, head up display, surround view monitor, blind spot view monitor, highway driving assist, forward collision assist, Johnson turning and crossing, and reverse parking collision avoidance assist. Yeah, basically every kind of assistance you could ever think of and more. Now I think by far the GV60 looks best from the side. We've got 21 inch wheels, split opinion. I like them. What do you think? Let me know. But I also love this Melbourne matte grey paint. It's lovely. It's a £1,100 option but worth its weight in gold. Cleans really well by the way. Washed it yesterday. Super easy to clean. Looks brilliant. Now one thing I would say is that this contrasting colour does sometimes mean that EVs can look a bit kind of like you scared a cat in the middle of the night. However, I realised that a lot of EVs, because I think of their weight, they do ride slightly higher. So it's quite a good way of just, I guess, setting it so it looks kind of right. Now again, we have the Genesis quad lights, which look good. Genesis along and GV60. But really, it looks like a funky car. I'm, I'm glad that they haven't tried to make this look like just a traditional car. They just kind of think, well, what's quite cool and funky? And this exactly is. We've kind of got this little spoiler, which looks good in the middle. Now, if you are planning an IKEA trip, then you will get 1,550 litres of boot space with the seats down, and then 680 litres with the seats up. And how about this for value for money? Unlike your normal German rivals with a three-year warranty, this car has, as standard, five-year servicing, five-year warranty, five-year courtesy car, five-year roadside assistance, and five-year map updates. Yeah, that's awesome. Right. Let's jump inside. Now remember, we are challenging the Kia and the Tesla, and from where I'm sitting, Oh yeah, we are in for a serious fight. Because, to start with, these leather seats are gorgeous. They are fine Nappa leather. This one's got a performance seat as well, which means when I put this into sport mode, the whole seat bolster, not the seat, the bolster drops down. The side bolsters come in and squeeze you. They hug you like an old friend and it's lovely. Also, if you want to go vegan though, you can just get these in the standard plant-based leather that they come with. Now, in front of you, you have the Genesis Connected Car Integrated Cockpit. What does that mean? It gives you two 12.3 inch displays on this panoramic curved glass screen, which is awesome. I like that. 
That is popular, I admit. That's not massively revolutionary. A lot of cars have got it, but it's really clear. It works well, top notch. Now the central one is touchscreen, as I mentioned. So you can press the buttons here and go through the displays. It's very intuitive. You can scroll through, it's responsive. Things like electric vehicle information, how far you are to your next charge, if you leave the aircon on versus off, how much more mileage you might get, and also where the closest charging point is. More than that though, you've got things like map and destination. Obviously remember, five year map updates when you buy the car new. You've got things like phone connectivity, media connectivity, you've got Android Auto, CarPlay. One thing I like in here is about the 3D settings. You can go around the car and actually choose different things you want. So you might want to change how the lights work, leaving and entry lights, driver assistance, the door and trunk, different things, which is rather useful. You can also get a Bang & Olsen sound system, which sounds fantastic, but also the standard one is perfect. Below that, we have air conditioning controls and thank Genesis for Genesis' ability to put actual buttons in this car. I'm a massive fan of buttons. I don't like taking my eyes off the road to stare down at weird, annoying touchscreens. I like this. You've got all the different controls you get in here. Map, navigation, radio, media, below. Hazards, you've also got climate controls, passenger, driver, air conditioning, heated. It's all there for you. Now in front of us, you've got your head-up display, which you can see is onto the windscreen. But below that, we have the second 12.3 inch display. Now this is not touchscreen. You do it all through the controls on your steering wheel. So simple things like cruise controls on your steering wheel, but you can do things like this. Look at that, how awesome is that? So this is using the 360 degree camera, specifically the one at the front of the car to display the road ahead of us. When I turn, the wheels will turn, you'll see the car moving. Also, when you navigate, it will show navigation screens. For example, an arrow pointing that way, if you want to go right. It's actually really, really cool. Also, with the motorway assist, when you have the little steering wheel at the top there and it's green, that will steer the car for you in lane, as long as you keep your hands on the steering wheel. Now, if you indicate to the left or the right, what will happen is this will move over for you on its own. You do not have to turn the wheel yourself. It will do it for you. It's a very crisp, very cr clear display. I like the way it's laid out. You can also change how the different instruments look and you can go through different modes, you know, your car settings, assist settings, that sort of thing, navigation. Now we have a lovely steering wheel. This leather is soft, like a BMW. If you sat in one of those, they feel quite similar to this and actually, very, very plush, very high end. And I like this display. We haven't got, we've just got the two little bits here. And we've got drive select, goes through things like sport, eco, comfort. We've also got this boost button. That gives you 10 seconds of additional boost, maximum power. I'll show you that later. We've got things like cruise control, sound up, sound down. And we've got these paddles behind. Now, no, they're not to change gear. They're actually to increase or decrease the level of regenerative braking you get in the car. Quick on that. The more you do it, the more power is fed back into the battery when you brake. You put this up and effectively the car is going to brake for you and put power back into the battery. Actually, I've learned to drive the car without really braking that much. I just turn them up and down. Now, just quickly, I've got things like heated and ventilated seats for me and my passenger. I've also got a heated steering wheel, auto hold for the handbrake, the cameras, park assist. I've got cubby holes in there. I've got wireless charging and cup holders, which is great. But this is what I want to show you. I'm excited about this. This crystal ball looking thing, it's called the Genesis Sphere. And what it is, is very cool. It's got this G matrix shape. It lights up. You can change the color of it. But when you start the car, it reveals the gear stick. And then all you do is go through the different modes like that. Oh, I love funky stuff like that. Let's go. Now try not to sound like an episode of Grand Designs. In the back. Oh. So we've got leather like in the front that extends to the back and it's very, very comfortable. But you know what I really like about this car? Because what they've done is actually make like an SUV roof line and then drop back at the, at the rear, you get ample amount of space for your headroom. It's, it's lovely. But you've also got a nice amount of legroom as well. And um, sometimes slightly when the seat is lower at the front, it's a little bit less feet room as it were, but actually, because you've got a flat floor, no drivetrain, there's lots of space in the middle. So your passenger in the middle is nice and comfortable. 
You've got USB-C sockets in the back as well, which is lovely. And a nice little feature, on the passenger seat, you have these little buttons. And what you can do is actually move the passenger seat backwards and forwards. If you're in the back, you can just quickly move it forward to give yourself a little bit more room. Also, not to forget, you've got things like an Alcantara-like soft material on the roof. You've also got it on the sun visors. You've got lights in the back for your passengers. So you can do all that. So yeah, I mean, you'd be very, very comfortable. Cup holders in the in this door here. You've got little gore bubbins as well for sweets and things. You've got storage. There's loads in the back here. Very, very comfortable. So now we've gone around the outside and the inside. I think it's time to jump in. It's beeping at me and go for a drive. Let's go. It's a new day for good time. I just turn the page, let it ride. What a life. Every atom in my body feels okay. To start with, I'm going to do a naught to sixty test. Four seconds is what we're going for. I've been told I want to put it in sport and press the boost button. Yes, like Fast and Furious and Gone in 60 Seconds, the boost button gives me 10 seconds of ultimate power for things like rapid acceleration. Are we ready? Let's go. Five, four, whoa, that's getting quick. That's, whoa, that's far too quick, that's far too quick. Oh my word. I am I'm not used to the rapid acceleration of EVs. I'm really not. I, I'm used to kind of building up the revs. That is unbelievable. <sighs> Flipping heck. The all-wheel drive is, is insane. It's just, it sticks very, very well. We've also got the Michelin Pilot Sport EV tires, which are very good. I really like Michelin's. I'm top marks. But this car is Jacqueline and Hyde, two personalities. <laughs> feisty and exciting and then relaxed and calm and gentle and golfing loving and just yeah man awesome simple amenities that you need in a car nowadays are things like adaptive cruise control so follow the car in front you can adjust the distance between each other also things like it keeps yourself in lane between the lines. It will help steer as well. With that on, it's quite a lot of getting used to. You can completely turn those off as well. Um, but it does take a lot of getting used to just when the car signs serves from something. When you go over a line, it will push you back, which is quite useful. On the motorway especially, it is very, very useful. Now the regenerative braking does take quite a bit of getting used to. At the moment, I've got it on zero, which means take my foot off and it doesn't do anything. If I push it down to three, look, it's stopping. It's braking, braking, braking. Now the maximum one called the iPedal will go all the way to zero. It will stop the car for you. But I often kind of just go between two, three and the iPedal, the maximum amount. It's just really useful. It means that when I'm coming up to set traffic lights, instead of putting the brakes on myself, I just wind up the regenerative braking. Hopefully it means I'm getting some more juice back in my battery. Right, I'm doing my usual turnaround spot. And now the actual, the GV60 is not the smallest car. I don't think it looks like a hatchback and it's hatchback size. It's not, and it's, you know, it's not too bad removability, but it, you know, could perhaps be a little bit tighter. But the head-up display isn't distracting. It's quite useful. You can turn it off. You can adjust how you want to up and down. It's really useful. I also like the blind spot camera. So when I'm indicating left, like I am now, I've got a little picture on my dashboard that just shows me my blind spot in case someone's cycling, someone's running, whatever it might be, I can just see it. Useful in cities, not so much in the sticks, but it's still pretty useful. So there are lots of different driving modes in the car. You've got Eco, Comfort, Sport, and then an individual. In Eco, it puts you into two-wheel drive only, and it also reduces the power output of the car just to help try and ease back to try and get you some more miles. Go into Comfort, and it will swap between two and four-wheel drive. And if you go into Sport mode, it goes on to all-wheel drive, gives you the maximum power output. It also firms up the steering and the handling. And if you've got these performance seats, the bolster goes down, they come in, and you feel very racy. Flipping heck! God, I don't know if you can sense how quick this car is, but all you can hear is wind noise. All you can hear is so quick, blisteringly quick, this car. Now, build quality, 
I'm, he's phenomenal. Now, if I jump into a Audi Q4, or Q8 e-tron, whatever it might be, and I try and play with the plastic screens in the middle, they will creak till kingdom come. But in this car, look, these two screens, nothing. And I don't wanna break it, but there is nothing in here that is rattling. It's, it's doors, all the soft touch, leathery bits, like everything is so well built. It's just, I am gobsmacked why people don't try this car more because the quality in here is absolutely second to none. It's almost leading in some areas in the car market. It's brilliant. You must head down to a showroom and find one. I think there's a showroom in Westfields in London, if you're local to London area, but there are a couple around. Just give a Google, find some. They, it's well worth the trip just to look at this interior and how quality it is. Now with this performance and quality, of course it will come with a price tag. The base car starts at 53,000 pounds. This Sport Plus model starts at 66,700, and this exact car is a smidgen over 73,000 pounds. Now, please bear with me. Don't go crazy in the comment section saying, what, 70 grand? You must be joking, because I'm not joking. However, I'm just gonna tell you one thing. If you look for this quality, this level of quality and performance in most other German manufacturers, Mercedes, BMW, Audi, you're probably not gonna be spending less than 100,000 pounds. That's the truth of it. You're not gonna be spending less than that on a car, realistically. Unless you go for Bogo standard base model, which this car isn't got, head up display, it guides you, it will change lane, parks for you. All of that tech, you won't get in those cars unless you go to the top spec. So this car, value for money wise, I think is brilliant. Also got to think that this is not a small car. This is a five-seater, big boot, big range. It claims to do around 286 miles of range. Today I've got 65%, it says 137 miles uh, left. So if you're taking that, okay, yeah, I could see. If you're driving economically, you could probably get you know, 250, 260. In the cold, it's not gonna be as good, but yeah. I know price is a big thing for a lot of people, but, and actually, right, this is a lot of money. You aren't gonna be disappointed that you're not getting the value for that money. Now in this bit, I'm gonna to go to settings and vehicle settings. Now I'm gonna put the active sound on. That gives you in synthetic driving sound. So just wear with me. But while I'm waiting, just to let you know about the competition. Model Y starts at 65,000 pounds. The EV6 GT, the Kia, starts at 62,000 pounds. So these are all pretty much in the same place. But ready? Listen to this sound. <laughs> oh god, the brakes aren't bad actually too. Yeah, listen to this again, ready? That's so cool! Your kids will love that sound, trust me. Right, while I am in sport mode, I must admit, although it does firm up the steering and suspension, the seat hugs you a little bit, this is not a sporty car. Now I say that, you know, with a pinch of salt. It's very fast. In that terms, it is sporty. But I think the ride is more designed towards comfort. It soaks up the bumps so well, and I mean so well, as in like, it's, you know, in between air ride suspension, Range Rover, like territory. I honestly, honestly, it is so soft. But when you go through the corners, and like I am in sport mode now, it's, it's not wallowy, it does kind of, stick to the bends but there is a lot quite a bit of body roll and you do move around i'm glad the seat in the performance seat does hug you a little bit more but it does seem to roll around a lot and you know it's not ideal but if i'm honest from most of the ev owners that i've spoken to comment below what you think most of them are just kind of straight line speed traffic lights pulling out junctions it's not round corners it's not really where they're designed to go fast really on the whole now before i pull over and conclude the video I want you to comment below something. First of all, did you know Genesis before watching this video? Yes or no? The second thing is, are you considering buying an electric car? If you are, what are you considering? EV6, the Tesla Model Y, what are you thinking? And would you now consider buying the Genesis over one of those cars? Just off this video alone, let me know below, because I really want to know if I've been able to portray what this car is like, how good this car is, but yeah. Let's pull over and have a quick chat. Oh, 
So what do we think of the Genesis GV60? Well, I have been unbelievably impressed by this car and I hope you have seen why. Now, for me, I put out on my Instagram a little while ago a poll and I said, out of you, who knows who Genesis are? And about 76% of people said, yeah, yeah, I know who Genesis are, no problem. Uh, then I said, who would consider buying a Genesis as their next EV? Only 24% of people said, yeah, they would consider it. Why? Is it because you want a fancy badge? I get it, I get it, BMW, Mercedes, they have been around for ages, they are the fancy badges, but where I'm standing, this car is far exceeded my expectations. Build quality, sublime, far better than Tesla, absolutely brilliant, absolutely on par with Audi, BMW, perhaps even more in cer certain, certain cars. Performance-wise, who's, who's, who's gonna be beating this on the road? Four seconds, not to 60. All-wheel drive, the dual motors, yeah, brilliant. I'm gonna say a massive thank you to Genesis for giving this car for the week. And if you're someone that's looking for perhaps a family EV and you're not really sure this is gonna be quite big enough, in very, very shortly, I'm going to be handing the keys to the GV70 Electrified. Slightly bigger. I'm going to do something a little bit quirky with that one. So stay tuned to find out more. But if you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to see plenty of future videos to come. But for now, enjoy.